Hello there. Good afternoon. I'm going to speak to you today regarding complex lymphatic therapy. I have no disclosures to... I would like to share with you the current um, discussion of what um, lymphatic medicine is and lymphedema is Before really bad. chronic edema indicates lymphatic failure. And when one looks at the, the number of publications and the research data, mainly from uh, animal experiments, it's true, but our own studies in humans has uh, proved the point that there is no evidence that there is any venous reabsorption of fluid in the tissue. And that therefore means that all tissue really has to exit via the lymphatic, which makes the lymphatic as the critical uh, point in terms of drainage of all fluid from the tissue. That's quite a dramatic finding. Yeah, it is. And it means that therefore you've always got to think lymphatic whenever you see edema, irrespective of what that cause of edema is. So for example, you see a heart failure patient, and one has edema and the other one doesn't, despite the fact they've got the same heart failure situation, the difference will of course be the lymph drainage. And that is profoundly important because the role of the lymphatics now is crucial to prevent and reduce edema. There's no net absorption of the interstitial fluid by the venous microvessels. Therefore, tissue fluid balance depends on that lymph flow. And if we are going to affect change in the lymphatic system in order to reduce the edema that the patient sees, we have to be aware as a lymphedema therapist that the lymphatic failure is three things. Either there's a dynamic insufficiency with an increased lymphatic load on a healthy system, which would, let's say, be CHF, or a mechanical insufficiency, whether it be primary lymphedema, but there's a normal lymphatic load on a damaged system or combined. Let's say somebody who has a, a lymphedema due to uh, breast cancer, and then they get an infection. So it's these three lymphatic failures that the therapist has to be aware of when they are seeing these types of patients. These pictures that you see are patients that I see every single day. So, as the, everyone was talking about, there's a primary lymphedema, which is an intrinsic deficit, and then there's a secondary, a specific external. There's a normal, they were born with a normal lymphatic system, but because of a trauma, they now have impairment or lymphatic failure. So when I work with the patient, the patient always says, can't you just take a needle and just suck it out? No, I can't, because there is a failure in the system and there is fluid that is going into the interstitium, and because of lymphostasis, you now have a lot of adipocytes and a lot of fatty tissue or a fatty laydown. So therefore, we want to make sure that um, we're able to affect change in the lymphatic system. But that lymphatic system has an organization in that we are affecting change in the um, right at the uh, subfascial layer. We have the initial lymphatics, we have the pre node, then we have the lymph nodes, and then um, the lymphangions, the trunk going up to the subclavian vein. So when I'm doing complex lymphatic therapy, this is what I'm affecting change on. There is fluid in the interstitium right here. It's based on the changes in the microcirculation. And it is in this area between the blood capillaries and lymphatic capillaries where all that excess fluid and macromolecules are in the interstitium and is that area that is swelling. So therefore, as a lymphatic Edema therapist, I am affecting changing changes at the microcirculation. So therefore, I want to show you that if I'm going to affect change, here's a picture with undersign in green of what lymphatic circulation looks like. So if you could see right here, you're going to see some lymph angion or the pumps moving that lymphatic fluid through the system, and then it eventually goes to the subclavian vein. 
But what happens is if I'm not, a, we have to be aware of the deep lymphatics or this is a thoracic duct and we want to affect change by changing total tissue pressure, we want to be able to move fluid into the deep lymphatics or the thoracic duct and the cisterna chile. And that cisterna chile is um, helping move that fluid back into the subclavian vein. And then it is responsible for superficial drainage of the left upper anterior and posterior lymphotome or quadrant and bilateral lower extremity anterior and posterior lymphotome. The other area that we want to look at is the right upper quadrant. So superficially, it goes from the superficial area down to the deep, and that deep area is responsible for superficial drainage of the right upper quadrant anterior and posterior. So subsequently, we also know that superficially, here are the different areas that go back into the thoracic duct, the, cer the cisterna chile, back into the subclavian vein. So when we put it all together, you will see that we're going through and changing all this pressure, trying to move that interstitium into the initial lymphatics to drain through the system, getting um, macro molecules to break down. But how does this relate? to complex lymphatic therapy. Well, clearly, we know that total tissue pressure change must change in order to facilitate lymphatic fluid to go through the initial lymphatics, through the entire organization of the lymphatic system back to the veins. And that causes either manual techniques and massage movement exercise and continuation. We, have, we want to affect lymphatic transport so we can do that with um, skeletal muscles, breathing, moving um, the pulsations, external pressure, and fibrosis. So what you have to refer to is in your lymphatic therapist is what we call complex lymphatic therapy, that there's five pillars. The first item is manual lymphatic drainage. And you will see that it's a specific type of technique that's responsible for um, moving that fluid based on total tissue pressure. There's circular stretching, and there is pressure phase and on and off, just mimicking total tissue pressure to move that fluid. Plus, there's a certain sequence that we follow so that the fluid will go and get decongested to go back to the subclavian vein. The other area is, and if we can, let's move right through it. And then we'll, um, which it's not going. Let's try it. There we go. We can also affect change on the venous wound. We want to change that internal environment as well as change the external environment. So we can do manual lymphatic drainage about the wound. And you would think that's painful, but not. Patient says, oh, finally a change. So let me show you the... Uh, what happens with manual lymphatic drainage. This is before manual lymphatic drainage. You'll see some stagnation of that lymphatic fluid in the lymphatics. Then we apply manual lymphatic drainage, changing the total tissue pressure with our techniques, also knowing the sequence of events, and hence you will see flow moving through the system. All righty? So this is evidence for Medicare and the other insurance companies to say, you know what? Complex lymphatic therapy works. Manual lymphatic therapy works. The other area that, is, um, that must work with that is uh, short stretch bandaging. And you'll see why elastic garments only maintain, they don't reduce, based on the properties of elastic bandages versus the properties of short stretch bandages, which is making your muscles pump and then you're pushing fluid through the lymphatics. Therefore, short stretch or inelastic works much, much better. The selection of proper garments, you want to make sure that here it is with inelastic and short stretch bandages, you're seeing a change of total tissue pressure, but here with an elastic stocking, you're not seeing much change. So we're doing manual lymphatic drainage to reduce the swelling and applying the correct garments for lifelong management. Additionally, we'll do decongestive exercises at 5%. 
follow the sequence of moving fluid through the system in order to get through to the subclavian vein, as well as being uh, involved in skin care, looking at all these different wound skin alterations and working on taking care of them, and ultimately self-management, because there is no cure. It can be contained, it can be managed, but there is no cure. And so um, manual lymphatic drainage, uh, exercise, choosing the right garment, compression bandaging, and self-management is important. And so when we see patients, I just want to share with you that you've learned to diagnose. You've seen the limb. I'm showing you what complex lymphatic therapy can do. After 20 years of UNA boots, changing the internal external environment, in four months we were able to take care of him. Diabetic microangiopathy uh, and um, some of the flebo lymphedema, this is two weeks. Here is lipolymphedema. She lost 100 pounds in three months, and she was bedbound here and was able to ambulate, take care of herself, dress, and go home. Here's another woman. This is two weeks for upper extremity lymphedema and uh, flebo lymphedema with um, short stretch bandaging and compression. This was two weeks. And here's an individual who had lipolymphedema for five years, and the doctor said, elevate diuretics, compression stockings, and a pump. You think she can get stockings on that? No. So she came to me, she lost 131 pounds, and look at her limbs, and she, this was in 2004, and she's still self-managing and is independent. So no matter how profound the edema is, minimum or large, we can manage it with um, treatment. And I thank you.